And this section here just kind of expands a little bit more on those like trend line things that we kind of covered yesterday largely. So it's going to go pretty fast. A trend line is a line that goes through the kind of the, the middle of the data points. Um, oh, I should have gave you a chance to guess. Middle of. Don't really have a blank for the the, but middle of the data points to give an approximation of the data. So to give an approximation of the data. And especially for that one on the right, well, I'll come back to that. So, so if we have something like this on the quiz, on the test, on homework you could go and just grab one from the back if you want, but quiz and test definitely use some sort of a straight edge. You could try to use the edge of your calculator if you want to. I have a whole bunch of protractors in this drawer back here, um, drawer in the right, middle of the room. Uh, but try to use a straight edge of some sort. I'm going to use my remote control because it's close by. And what you want to do is you want to try to have a line that kind of goes through about the middle of the points. So you want to have about half the points above, half the points below, depending on kind of if you have some that are way higher than others. We'll see how I do this time, but maybe something like this here. That's good. Pretty decent. So that there would be like my, my line of best fits. You might want to try to sketch in kind of something like that. Um, part of my issue though is when I put a ruler on, sometimes the ruler covers up points. You know, and if I look, it's like maybe my bottom part should be a little higher down there because I have those points above. So I'm probably a little bit off. Um, you can go back and erase. That'd be a good thing to do, especially on like a quiz or a test. But to try to help myself be closer, sometimes what I've been known to do is this. So say the graph on the right, I'll take and say, all right, I want to be right about here. That looks like it's kind of a good approximation kind of for this like top part. And then I kind of picture, I kind of hover above the other side, say, well, if I put it here and I'm kind of imagining like an invisible line in between. So I want to put it probably right about here-ish because then that's going to have a few points above, a few points below. So sometimes doing that helps me better because now that I put my, my straight edge on top of that and I can't see half the points, I know about where I want to land for my line. So putting the points on kind of to help you picture it, does that work for people? Yeah. And uh, so kind of what's the advantage of this? If I didn't have this blue line on there, and somebody were to say, okay, we have hours of study on this graph, and we have the Regents score. So if they were to say, well, if you were to study five hours, or if you were to study four, let's say four hours, if you were to study four hours, how many, what should your score be? It's like, well, four hours is here. If I follow my four hours of study up, if I don't have that blue line, it's like, oh, there's no points. Um, so maybe they say, well, so if you have the line, though, you could follow the four up till you see the line. And the approximation of our data is right about there. So then you follow that straight across, and it's about a 77, maybe, something like that, a little closer to 80 than 70. Yes. Does that make sense to people? Yes. Even if it was a five hours of study, does it make sense to go all the way up till you hit the dot here for five? No, because this person's kind of above average. You know, it'd probably still make better use of your data to go up to the hit the line. Well, this is kind of our approximated value. 82. So yeah, like an 82, kind of in there somewhere. Does that make sense, people? Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how you can use the trend lines. Um, if we were to go down this bottom one here, I'm going to switch colors. There's a whole lot of blues. You know, I'm maybe going to say, well, right about here-ish for that. These are all pretty much in kind of a straightish line but you're trying to aim for kind of a line that goes about right through the middle of all those. Maybe something about like that. And then this last one. Uh, trend line on the last one? No, no trend. No trend. That, you know, you could try to, there's maybe a little bit of this here, but there's a whole lot down here pulling it down, you know. Well, maybe you could go here. There's, there's just really no trend. It's too kind of scattered. But this one here is what type of trend from yesterday? Positive. Yep, so this one has a positive trend. Which one of the ones up above has a negative? Perfect. Top left, that's the negative trends. So does that look familiar? Yes. 
should I do a little bit more in that whole estimating, like if you this is your x value, estimate y, should I do another one like that? Or are you guys like, we got it? I got it. Wait, okay. what? What's the question? Um, so maybe just, I'll just say it one more time. If you were to put in your trend line, or once your trend line's in, and then say on this top graph they said, well, with a height of 5,000 meters, what should the pressure be? What you do is you start at your 5,000 meters, you go up until you hit the line, because the line is kind of like our average point. Okay. And then you take that straight across, should be a little higher than that, till you get here. And what we're really trying to say when we get this spot here that's kind of like a 57 or so, is we're trying to say this point right here would have an x value of, what's the x value of this ginormous point there? 57. Ah, that's not the x value, that's the oh, that's a y value, because that's the height. But the x value is the 5,000. Yep. And we'll do more like graphing points and stuff this year, but, but that point right there is an x value of 5,000. When there's an x value of 5,000, there's a y value of 57.